go down to the Apollo on Amateur Night, and there were two sisters who were the dancing sisters in the world called the Edward Sisters, and they were starring at the Apollo, and they closed the show at the Apollo. The Edward Sisters. The Edward Sisters. Yeah. And I, when I saw those ladies dance, I said, no way I'm going out there and try to dance, because they stopped the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had, and when the, they closed, that was the end of the show, and then the, the uh, amateur hour uh, came. I was the first one was called. And when I got out there, somebody hollered up in the audience, what is she going to do? <laughs> and now this child walks out on stage, tacky. I mean, out of shape, pigeon toe, uh, not hair, the quaff was not chic. Nothing, you know, <laughs> she was far from chic. So we started booing, you know, like a bunch of rowdy kids we were. You know, boo, get that, get out of here, blah, blah. Anyway. anyway, she started singing. She said, if her, if her words say yes and you're wrong in your guess, that's Judy, my Judy. And she had a way of just putting it right in the pocket. And she quieted down this rowdy bunch of people, I swear, when she finished, you could hear a rat piss on cotton. Look at me. I'm as helpless as a kitten up a tree. And I feel like I'm clinging to a cloud. I can't understand. I get misty. Just a hold in your hand Walk my way And a thousand violins begin to play Or it may be the sound of your hello That music I Webb was in the Apollo Theater, and Bardu Ally, who was yeah. directing, he uh, told Chick about me, and he took me up in Chick Webb's uh, dressing room, and he said, listen to this when girl sing, she can sing. And he said, I don't want any girl singers. Appearance would have had a lot to do with the fact that they wanted somebody extraordinary glamorous where a woman was concerned. And for a while, that was Ella's shortcomings. But when he brought her to the Savoy Ballroom, well, it was a foregone conclusion. She fitted that spot like a glove. I'll chase the blues away. I'll laugh and sing all day. I found my lover, someone who'll be true. 
Ella's life on the road began in 1936 when Chick Webb went out for a series of one-nighters. For Ella, life on the road would last for the next 58 years. She said, you know, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Chick. And of course, he took over the responsibility of her well-being because of her age. And that was why they allowed her to go out on the road with him. I'd absolutely almost get sick when Count Basie would give us itinerary to go on the road. We'd get to the Harlem Tunnel and almost cry, leaving New York, leaving Harlem. At that time, you know, the South was, uh, it was very segregated. And uh, we used to take pictures of signs for colored only, for whites only, even drinking fountains. We had a bus, two Lincoln Zephyrs, chauffeur-driven cars. We pulled up to the White Tower, and we couldn't get a hamburger. I mean, we would not be, we weren't in no jeans and shaggy. I mean, we were coming up with that. We couldn't get a hamburger. Up till this day, I can't go to a White Tower. I'm mad with everybody. Well, I worked with the band when we had to travel through the South, and I went through all those experiences. So I feel great that I have been able to pay those dues because uh, when you pay them, then you know what it's all about. That's how we become greater, by learning to face these things. I remember one thing Chick Webb always told me when I first started singing, I wanted to sing a ballad. And he didn't feel that I was prepared to sing a ballad. And without me even realizing it, with the experience, as I went along singing with the band, I gradually, we start doing ballads and I didn't even realize that I had changed. I try to think that love But it's uncut. 